the divine law, violation or fulfillment, and their consequences. Revelations of Jesus Christ from 1884 to 1950. Thus saith the Lord. On this morning of festive commemoration, I ask you, what have you done with the law I conveyed to mankind through Moses? Were those commandments given only to the men of that time? Truly, I tell you, that holy seed does not dwell within the hearts of men, for they do not love me, and neither do they love one another. They do not honor their parents, nor do they respect what belongs to others. On the contrary even, they take one another's lives, they adulterate and bring shame upon themselves. Do you not hear the falsehood emerging from everyone's lips? Have you not realized how one people deprives another people of its peace? And still mankind insists it knows my law. What would become of men if they were to forget my commandments entirely? During the second era, when Jesus entered Jerusalem, he found that the temple, the place dedicated to prayer and worship, had been transformed into a market, and the master, full of zeal, cast out those who had defiled the temple, saying to them, My father's house is not a marketplace. However, those he cast out were less guilty for what they did than those who were supposed to be responsible for guiding men in the law of God. The priests had converted the temple into a place where ambitions and pompousness ruled, but this reign was destroyed. Today I have not made use of a whip to punish those who defile my law. I have, however, allowed the consequences of their transgressions to be felt within them, so they may come to understand their meaning and realize that my law is inflexible and unchanging. I have pointed man towards the straight and righteous path, the path he needs to follow. Should he depart from it, he subjects himself to the consequences of transgressing my righteous law, wherein my love is made manifest. I will reconstruct my temple, a temple without walls or towers, for it exists within the hearts of men. The Tower of Babel divides humanity still, but its foundations shall be destroyed within the hearts of men. Idolatry and religious fanaticism have erected tall towers as well, though they are brittle and they shall fall. Truly, I tell you, my laws, both the divine and human, are sacred, and they themselves shall judge the world. Humanity does not believe itself to be idolatrous, but truly, I tell you, still it worships the golden calf. Chaos has returned, for there exists no more virtue, and where there is no virtue, there can be no truth. It is not that the law the Father delivered to Moses has no power, nor that the doctrine of Jesus was only applicable to past times. Both of them, in their spiritual essence, are eternal laws. Recognize, however, that they are like a fountain, from whose waters none are compelled to drink, but that whoever approaches this fountain of love does so of their own volition. Interpret my teachings correctly. Do not think that my spirit is happy to see your suffering on this earth, or that I come to deprive you of everything that brings you joy, just for me to delight in your misery. I come to make you recognize and respect my laws, for they are worthy of your obedience and respect, because when you comply with them, they will grant you joy and bliss. 
I taught you to render unto God what is God's, and unto Caesar what is Caesar's. But for the men of today, there is only Caesar, and to your Lord you have nothing to offer. If only you would offer to the world what is absolutely necessary, then your suffering would be less. But the Caesar you have allowed to dictate your every move has declared absurd laws, has made you slaves, and taken your lives from you without giving you anything in return. Consider how different my law is, which tethers neither the body nor the spirit. It merely persuades you with love and gently guides you. It freely gives you everything, devoid of self-interest or egoism, rewarding and compensating all over time. Fulfillment of the Supreme Commandment The Lord has told you, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and spirit and love your neighbor as yourself. The Master preached to you the doctrine of love. Now this spiritual voice, proceeding from the same source, comes to tell you to embrace the law of love, for it possesses a strength that not even the greatest armies of the world can claim to have. Its conquests shall be certain and lasting, for all that you build upon foundations of love will have life eternal. I show you the true life of the Spirit, so you will not live under unjust threats, merely obeying my law out of fear of God's punishment. For you have been told of this punishment by those who have not known how to correctly interpret my word. Take my law. It is neither complicated nor difficult to comprehend. None who know it and align themselves with it will be struck down. They will give no room to erroneous words, prophecies, ideas, or interpretations. My law is simple. It always shows the way you must follow. Trust in me, for I am the way, and I will lead you to the brilliant white city, the promised land, keeping its gates open in anticipation of your arrival. When will you finally be convinced that only by fulfilling my law will you be able to find health, happiness, and life? You acknowledge that in this material life there are principles one must follow in order to survive. However, you have forgotten that there are spiritual principles as well that must be respected, so one may partake of the source of eternal life within all things divine. Remember that I alone am your salvation. In times past, present, and future, my law was, is, and will be the way, the guide of your spirits. Blessed be all who trust in my law, for they shall never lose their way at the crossroads. They will arrive at the promised land and intone the hymn of triumph. I know that the greater your knowledge of me, the more you will love me. When I say to you, love me, do you know what I truly wish to tell you? I am telling you to love truth, to love life, to love light, to love one another, and to love the true life. I want you to love one another as I love you, and to love yourselves as well, for I have entrusted to you the guidance and leadership of not just a certain number of people, but of yourselves as well, for this is your first and foremost obligation towards me. You must love yourselves, knowing that you are the living image of your Creator. The mission I have entrusted to my people on this earth is both great and incredibly delicate. That is why I have sought them out in every era to inspire them with my word, revealing to them another piece of the content of my law every time. 
the law of love, goodness, and justice has been the spiritual inheritance I have delivered to my people in every era. From lesson to lesson, I have guided humanity towards the understanding that the law can be summarized in a single commandment: love. Love the Father, the Author of life. Love your brother, a very part of the Father, and love all that the Lord has created and decreed. Love is the cause, the origin, the seed of wisdom, greatness, strength, elevation, and life. That is the true path outlined by the Creator for the Spirit, so that step by step, from homestead to homestead. You will feel ever closer to me. If mankind had made a worship of the spiritual love from the very beginning, instead of falling into idolatrous rites and religious fanaticism, this world, today transformed into a valley of tears by men's anguish and misery, would be a valley of peace, in which spirits would gain merits in order to, after this life. Reach those spiritual homesteads they must enter on their journey towards elevation.